Hey guys, uh, so today I want to show you an easier way of getting yourself ready for tufting. I know a lot of people don't want to commit to the buttons right away and I'm going to show you a way to do it. You can do the entire thing without buttons and then if you have to go back you can adjust them easier the way I'm going to show you. So a lot of times what I do on the online classes and I, I really strongly suggest if you're a fan of the YouTube channel that you go on the on that you take an online class, maybe just one, just to see what the difference is. But oftentimes on the online classes, I'm showing people um, an easier way of doing things, like say with pin tacking, for instance, uh, which isn't a committing a tack all the way, and it's a little harder to take a, a tack all the way in out. You know what I'm saying? So this is kind of what I'm trying to do with the tufting, because a lot of people. Uh, they're, they're very nervous with the tufting, especially if they're spending a lot of fabric uh, on fabric. So what I'm going to do first is show you on this piece here. This is a Turkish chair. And we have this featured in another YouTube video about taking it apart. You might want to check that out if you're interested in the chair itself. But for tufting, this is going to be beginner's tufting, okay, this class. So when you, when you look at a piece, first of all, you, you get a little overwhelmed when you look at a whole, all these buttons. Well, if it helps you, you're doing it three sections at a time. And I usually do the, the back first and then the arms. So there's three sections to it. So focus on just the section that you're doing and then just the button that you're doing. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. But when you're measuring, it's not like a typical measuring job either. You're, you're, you're really measuring inside the buttonhole and I'll show you. So I've already got my fabric cut. I just want to show you what I'm going to do. Let's do the up and down measurement first. So I'm going down to where it's going to be tacked and I'm going into each hole. Look at you guys. I'm pushing the tape measure into each hole and then I'm coming all the way because that's the actual that's the actual surface measurement of the fabric, right? And it's good to the wood back there's 40. Then I'm going to give it another three inches. So it's 43 this way. And so it's going to be pieced at this button right here and maybe extend over this way. So uh, I'm going to measure from this button here side to side. And I think what I got out was the width of the fabric, believe it or not, you guys. You believe that? So I actually used the width of the fabric, which is 54 inches. That's how much you need for the back. You need a lot more. So if you're telling a client, if you are doing it uh, professionally, you need to make sure that you add on a little bit for this tufting. So as usual, I mark all my fabric. You overcut your fabric, oversize your fabric. It's not like a regular job. Tufting's more, right? You fold, you, you look for, you make sure you get your cut, your, your fabric marked on the back side and the top, which I have. And then you fold this in half and get a notch, which I did. Now I want to show you, I want to point something out on this chair. Your tufting, ideally you want your middle button starting in the middle of the back. Unfortunately, this does not have that. Okay, so what you have to do is go against the rule a little bit. I still want to start in the middle. And I prefer to start up here at the top, okay, and work down. Um, I don't know if that makes any sense, but no, you, normally you'd see tufting starts center, right, that's the center of the chair, but this is off center to me, uh, but that's fine. Everybody's different. So I'm going to line up my, my notch, and I want to make sure that I have enough fabric coming around to where I'm going to be stitching, not, not, this is a stitched back, believe it or not. So I'm just going to kind of pull this down to make sure I've got like two or three inches extra on that side. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm balancing my fabric out, you guys. I'm balancing the fabric. I'm not pulling it tight. Okay, I'm just kind of laying it in there. Okay, this is done so much different than, than a regular upholstered bag. Um, it's button by button, and you don't want to be pulling your fabric tight. You want, it, you, want it, you want the fabric to kind of fall for you, and I'll show you that with this first button. But so what I do when I'm, when I'm tufting, I string a button and I go with my buttons right away. But for you guys, what I'm going to do is show you one step. And this is, again, you see this a lot in the online classes. I don't think you would ever see this in a YouTube video anywhere, okay, including my own until now. So what I want to show you begin is um, a way of doing this that you don't have to, you know, get to, there's no anxiety here, okay, with the button there's a little bit of anxiety because you're putting it on the, and the, the loop when you pull it makes a bigger hole and sometimes you have to take that out and you're stuck, you might be stuck, so so what we're going to do is we're going to take a, a thread, we're just going to, we're not going to do double, we're just going to do a single, right, and this is about a yard long, okay, and I'm going to get my first one in right where I showed you up here, but before I do it, watch what I do. 
I want to try to project my pleats to the next buttons or where it's going to be stitched in the case of this first button we're doing, right? So it's going to be stitched up at the top. You see, it's already starting for me. It's already wants to fold up there, which is great. Right away, this fabric is, I can tell, is going to be a good fabric that way. It's not going to be a good fabric. It's a very light fabric, so it is going to show a lot of my work. Uh, so, so I have to be a little bit more attentive. For you beginners out there, if you're going to do this, you might want to pick a heavier fabric and maybe something that's a little darker. Uh, it doesn't show the flaws as much, right? Uh, this will show everything, so I have to be really careful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push my finger there to see what happens with my bottom pleat. Now watch. See, you can almost see the beginning of that bottom pleat. Now you have to fish for the button. And then now you have to adjust that a little bit, like going towards that button. Okay, and then you have to adjust this one going towards. This one has to be like flat this way. Like this way. See what you're doing? You're, you're, you're thinking ahead. You're, you're, you're projecting. If you just did it, you just put this in there without doing that, then you might have a problem. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to push again. And then I'm going to get this through. The needle through. Now I use a needle... Don't use a double-ended needle. There's, there's needles where the hole is down about a, an inch or two and you have another point here. I don't like those. I know why people have them, but I don't, I don't use them. I like the fact that you could put your finger hand, push this if you had to. You couldn't do that if it was a double needle. Uh, so I'm going to push this through. I just want one of these to come through. Okay, I don't want to... So I don't want two, I want one, and I'm going to make a knot make a knot in this and I'm going to give this a light pull to see if yeah that's going to hold and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this near the near the knot this is the, the part so there's only a thread going through there right now so if I made a mistake I could take that out a little easier then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find a place to attach this on the back which could be you could you could nail it down or in this case, I'm going to show you what I'm doing. There's a wire edge down here, and I'm just going to move this this way. This tur these Turkish chairs don't have wood, <laughs> but they do have wire. They do have wire coming up like this. So what I'm going to do is I am going to let's just adjust this a little bit. It's adjusted. I'm just going to give that a pull and then knot that. And I, I'm not um, because I know my button has to go in here. I don't have to pull this super tight so that's all let's turn it around see what we got here see how that looks see at the beginning of that let's pull this down a little bit okay so i'm happy with that so far so let's go to our next one okay now you need to know that there are three rolls of buttons here right one two three rolls of button and then on the top and the bottom, you have a, a straight pleat back and a straight pleat down, which has to be anchored, okay? But our next approach is going to be, let's go with this one, right? Notice how I'm not, I'm not working that that much. I'm just kind of letting it fall. And, and every once in a while, you have to actually take your fabric and kind of see what I'm doing here. I'm loosening it up a little bit. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus here and then... There's another button up top here. I'm going to roll that. Look at that, you guys. That came up really, really happy with that. Wow. That almost did it by itself. So I'm going to take another one right away. So in the case of the middle button, you're actually uh, projecting four pleats from the middle. Uh, one, two, three, and four. At the top, you're doing three pleats. One, two, and three. At the bottom, you're projecting three pleats also. Two of the angle pleats on the top and bottom, and one straight pleat. Does, do you follow that? So, the, so sometimes the middle one needs a little bit more planning. And you see how this, this guy doesn't want to, this isn't folding the way I want, so there's a little adjustment. So you do use your grain of the fabric, too. You don't want to start, the fabric shouldn't start either falling this way or up. You should get a, as even this way as you can. I say that because you can only do so much with the tufting, right? But you want to make sure, like for instance, I'm looking at the graining here, it seems to be going down like that, which could be an indication of the problem. So I just pulled it just a little bit, and let's, even though I'm not focused yet on these, sometimes your fabric allows you to even plan ahead 
even ahead of the four plates, okay? So, so in this case, look what I did. I pushed my finger there, and then I pushed my finger here, and I'm almost starting to get the other pleats, which this one will be down, actually. Well, let's not go too far, so it didn't work out. This is working out great, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, gonna to go right in here. And I would say that for all you guys out there doing tufting, you want to pick a time that's good for you, that's really quiet. I like to put classical music on when I'm doing this, believe it or not. Um, you really have to have patience when you're doing this. Clean hands, and I think you have to have the right mentality before you stop this. Don't do this at the end of the day when you're sweaty and tired. Do this at the beginning of the day, maybe, when you're fresh, there's nobody around, and you have the energy. <laughs> I guess that's the truth all the times. Having the energy, right? I'm going to pull this. Wow, I'm really happy with that, you guys. You see that? And I can even tie this off on the other on the other tie that I I have there, which is fine. You're not tightening this. You're not using the slip knot. You see my other videos. By the way, you can go to the other videos if you want about buttons and about how to make a slip knot. We've got at least two videos uh, about how to make the slip knot. Um, but that's going to be with the button and. You're going to be tight, and I'm going to be tightening it up a little bit more. It's going to even look better than that. So let's do a couple more because I'm having fun. Um, because I'm having fun because this fabric's working out really great. I wasn't sure when I saw it if it was. You never know until you actually start doing things, right, guys? So another again, we, we uh, with the tufting twine, the nylon tufting twine, we cut about a yard off. We thread it with our button needle that is not double needled, it's just, I mean, double pointed, it's single pointed with the, with, the, with the eye of the needle up here. Okay, now what I'm gonna do with my finger, I'm gonna come up here, what I'm gonna do here, you guys, I'm just gonna take this and go like this, see that, wow. Um, I don't know if you guys really understand what's happening here with this fabric, is working out great. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna take my finger here and push this down and then just project that up like that with my fingers. So far now, I haven't even used my regulator, you guys. A lot of times, um, your regulator is used on heavier fabric maybe, but your regulator can be used like when you're using your buttons too. But to even straighten out your pleats even more by using the, you don't use the point of the regulator, you're always using the one inch from the bottom, right? That's most of the time. So far, I haven't had a need to do that. So I'm going to push. You see what's happening here, you guys. I push this here. It's already projecting. That was already projecting down to the next, to the next button. Look at that. Look at that, huh? Isn't that beautiful? And that projects up. It's nice to have an easy job once in a while. Push that in. Now let's try that again. Oh, I just want to show you. Now that was a failed button, but but watch. Watch what happens when I see, you see a little hole there maybe, but it's not really a hole that's broken the threads. So my needle, what I'm doing is scratching that a little bit, and the hole goes away. So the whole purpose of doing this for you beginners is, is that you're not, you know, you're not committed to the button. Which, by the way, the loop of the button, like I said, I'll show you. So when you put the, when, you, when you're just using buttons to begin with, and you pull this through with your button needle, that makes, that's going to make a hole. That's going to break threads and then you might be in trouble. So this is a good way to start for beginners and even to the journeyman. I know some professional upholsters that do their, all of their tufting with this method first instead of jumping to the button. Let's do a couple more. Let's tie that off. It's great too that it's a tight woven. I only need to make one knot. Sometimes you need to double knot it if it doesn't if it doesn't have a great weave. So we're gonna pull that through. Not tight, not like the button, right? Not like the button needle. And I just gotta tie that, tie that off anyway, you guys. It doesn't matter. If you have wood, you can you can staple it or tack it. These can, by the way, these can stay in when you do your button over this. You don't have to take these out. So I'm going to do one more because that kind of evens it up. It's going to be coming down this way. So sometimes you actually have to take and fold it like so. 
and then over here there's a button and you, you, you project it so you push where the button is and then now look all the pleats have to be going the same way you can't reverse your pleats okay that's very important all the pleats should be going down like this why because that's how people sit and they sit down like this if, if you do it the other way people get up and it'll ruin your pleat work this way here it's falling this way already right I'm going to do one more You know, and then you're also looking at make sure that your line is straight. A lot of times when people do tufting, they kind of lose themselves on the pleat work and they don't pay attention to the horizontal or the vertical. That's really important because if you're off an inch or two on that, um, by the time you're over here, you're really off. So just pay attention to that. So I, was ju I just corrected myself on this one a little bit. So let's pull this through. Boy, it looked pretty already, doesn't it, you guys? And tie the knot there. Give that a pull. And just tie it anyway, you guys. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what type of knot you use. It's just temp temporary anyhow, right? So there you go. So there you go. That's a good start. So there you go, you guys. The beginners, uh, for beginners and for advanced, there, there's a good technique to starting the tufting on a, a in this case, a Turkish chair. So we're seeing